Joe, one of the co-publishers of Neon Squid, and we're really excited to present our new imprint to you at the Full Day of Dialogue. Before we show you our books, we just wanted to give you a quick overview of who we are. At Neon Squid, we create beautifully illustrated non-fiction books, kids aged 6 to 12, on all sorts of topics, from animals and history to science and space. At their heart, our books are classic educational reference books, but we don't always want kids to realise that. We're big believers in education by stealth, so we use whatever we can to hook readers in, whether that's gripping stories, intriguing topics, humour and, of course, amazing illustrations. We also think it's really important not to dumb down our books, as we believe kids should be pushed with really complex, entertaining subjects that shine lights on parts of the world that they might not know much about, but hopefully spark an interest that could last a lifetime. At Neon Squid, we like to try to find authors from unusual places um, who bring fresh approaches and expert knowledge to the books that we make. And of course, we want our books to represent society. So we're really committed to working with illustrators and authors from a diverse mix of backgrounds to appeal to as many kids as possible. And just a note to say, because we're a non-fiction imprint, we want to let you know that Neon Squid is actually a real animal. They can glow in the dark and they also fly. So we thought it was a really intriguing creature to be named after. Alongside myself on the team are Fiona and Sam. Give us a wave. Hello. <laughs> and now we're going to run for our th first books, and we hope you like them. So our first book is Tales of Ancient Worlds. This is an example of us taking a slightly obscure subject, in this case archaeology, and turning it into a gripping book of adventure stories. It's the biggest book on our first list at 160 pages, and it's for eight to ten-year-olds. It's very much inspired by Indiana Jones, and it's packed full of history. We've picked stories from all around the world, from abandoned pirate towns and Maya fortresses to Egyptian cities found at the bottom of the ocean. The stories flip between archaeologists making discoveries and the ancient past. For example, you'll witness the incredible ruins at Pompeii before jumping back in time to see what life was like in the town before the volcano erupted. There's a mixture of famous archaeology stories, such as Tutankhamun's tomb and Machu Picchu, as well as less well-known ones that you're unlikely to find in any other kid's book. And interspersed throughout the stories are pages that add a bit more context to the periods of history covered. For example, we have a story about a temple made of mammoth bones before delving deeper into what life was like in the Ice Age. The book is written by Stefan Milo Savlovich. He's an archaeology YouTuber with a great sense of humour and a knack of highlighting parts of history overlooked by others. And this is the start of a series with the next title on dinosaurs coming later in 2022. Next up is Animal Sidekicks, a book all about symbiosis. This is when two different species form relationships, usually to the benefit of both. For example, bees pollinating flowers. It's 128 pages long and for kids aged eight to 10. And it's full of brilliant biology, including bizarre and incredible relationships like the crab that carries a sea urchin on its head, the bat that sleeps inside a flower, and my personal favorite, the tiny frog and the fearsome tarantula, who are flatmates. The frog keeps the tarantula's burrow clean by eating ants, and in return, the tarantula protects the frog from deadly snakes. It's not all as heartwarming as this though. We also touch upon some more sinister, but just as cool forms of symbiosis. Like the seabird pirates that wait for puffins to catch fish and then swoop in and steal their meal, and the vampire finches that suck the blood of unsuspecting Nazca boobies, that is actually a type of bird. This book is a good example of education by stealth. Through these funny examples, kids will learn tons about the likes of ecosystems, evolution, and how plants disperse seeds. Our author is podcaster Macken Murphy, who does a very popular show about animals called Species, and we really love the humour he brings to the sometimes baffling examples of animal friendship. This next one is called Book of Sisters. We wanted to pick up on a trend that thankfully isn't just a trend anymore and create a title that was focused on women's history. Rather than just telling the stories of individuals, we wanted to bring our own twist to the topic and look at sister relationships, which a lot of you probably know from experience can be complex at the best of times. This 128 page book for eight to 10 year olds features biographies of incredible sisters from all over history and the world. Our authors have selected a diverse mix of siblings, including famous sisters like Venus and Serena, and Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. We've also got plenty of inspiring stories, for example, Maria and Marjorie Torchief of the Osage Nation, who became North America's first superstar ballerinas. We haven't steered clear of sisterly rivalry, and we've also included siblings that didn't get on very well, like Cleopatra, who actually went to war with her little sister. 
We also look at the really interesting role of sisters in mythology and include tales from Mayan, Greek and Polynesian myths. Alongside the biographies, we snuck in extra learning about the times the sisters lived in, from ancient Egypt and the Silk Road to World War II. The book is written by Olivia Michael and Katie Nelson, who hosts a really interesting podcast called What's Her Name, which profiles women who have been unfairly written out of the history books. Olivia is a professor of women's studies and Katie is a professor of history. And if that wasn't perfect enough, they're also sisters. Next up are two animal books in the same series called A Day in the Life. They're 48 pages long and for kids aged six to eight. If anyone's ever watched a TV show 24, this series is a bit like that, except with animals. First up is Big Cats. And in this book, each hour focuses on the adventures of different big cats as they hunt, fight and play through the day. You'll meet snow leopards high in the Himalayas who risk their lives every time they want breakfast. Black panthers in the Amazon battling crocodiles and a team of fearsome lionesses surrounded by a pack of hungry hyenas. Simple science explanations are weaved throughout the story from family trees that explain how big cats are related to what makes them such fearsome predators. This book is written by carnivore ecologist Tyus D. Williams, who in his day job can be found doing things like tracking jaguars through the jungles of Belize. Next in the series is Bugs. In this book, you'll meet leafcutter ants as they build a fungus farm inside their nest. Bees who dance to let each other know where to find the best flowers. And a gigantic moth in an aerial battle with a hungry bat. You'll also learn how a caterpillar turns into a moth through metamorphosis and how camouflage helps a praying mantis get its dinner. The author is Dr. Jessica Ware, who works at the Natural History Museum in New York and has appeared on podcasts such as Getting Curious with Jonathan Van Ness to talk about her love of bugs. Not only that, but she also is the current president of the Worldwide Dragonfly Association, so a pretty big name in dragonfly circles. And both books in the series are illustrated by acclaimed Indian artist Chaya Prabhat. The final book on our first list is called The Hospital. It was one of the first books we came up with at the start of last year when hospitals were really at the forefront of people's minds. But we didn't just want to do a book about COVID. We wanted to make this a celebration of healthcare workers and how lots of different people with different skills come together to make a hospital work and keep you healthy. We know hospitals can be scary places. So we want to demystify the process for kids who have to go to hospital themselves or maybe to visit someone in their family who is sick. This book is written as a non-fiction story that reveals everything that's going on behind the scenes at a hospital. It starts with a pregnant woman in labour coming up to the front desk in the morning and ends with her and her partner leaving with a baby at the end of the day. The book weaves its way through different departments through the day, meeting patients, doctors, nurses, chefs, cleaners, paramedics and much more. We also simply explain the science of hospitals, from how x-rays work to why doctors take blood pressure and what a drip is used for. The book is written by Dr. Crystal Nora, who's based at Johns Hopkins in Baltimore. She's part of an initiative called Black Girl White Coat, which provides mentorship to doctors from communities traditionally underrepresented in healthcare. It's also illustrated by Ginny Sue, whose charming illustrations give this a real storybook feel, helping to make the hospital seem like a friendly, welcoming place rather than something scary. We want this to be the start of a series that reveals the inner workings of interesting places, such as airports and museums. Thank you all for joining us at the full day of dialogue.